Welcome back everyone. We get to talk about another Android phone today and this time we're talking about a phone that I never even used before. I don't think I've ever talked about even this whole entire brand name before and it is the Razer Phone 2 and if you guys don't know anything about Razer, pretty much they make those gaming computers which I'm sure a lot of people have used or have even looked at one. A ton of people talk about them but they made a phone line one time and this is the last phone they ever made from them. Maybe they'll make more in the future, I'm not too sure, but they had the Razer Phone 1 and they had the Razer Phone 2. Now, I cannot find a Razer Phone 1 anywhere. I tried looking on eBay everywhere. The ones that are on eBay are like selling for a mad amount of money and I don't feel like spending that for that specific device. But this one is cheaper than the Razer Phone 1 in a lot of cases, so... This specific phone came out in 2018 and keep in mind that this was you know the time where we still had like the Galaxy S9 and it was released in October so like the iPhone XS came out so keep that in mind because the specs of this phone are really going to sound pretty much like you know up to date of like this year but there were a lot of cool things that this phone brought in 2018 that we didn't see even until like this year which is really cool. Now the design is really one of those things that's either like you like it or you hate it. Now for me personally, I actually do like this design, which is really weird because usually like the next bit Robin, which looked almost exactly like this, I hated that design, but this one, they did it completely right. Now on the front, you have that 5.72 inch IGZO IPS panel, I don't even know what they're calling it nowadays, and it's actually not a bad panel at all. You know, it actually looks pretty good. The viewing angles really aren't that great, I'll be honest, but it's a not it's not that bad of a panel. The colors look really good to me, and you know, once there's some panels out there that are IPS that you can kind of tell are maybe like our OLED, but no, you can tell this one's an IPS panel, but it's really not that bad. I, I really do think the panel on this thing is, you know, a thumbs up for the most part. But there's something that's extremely cool about this panel that we didn't even see in a lot of phones until this year, and that is actually the 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, on this specific phone, you have the ability of not only keeping that 60 hertz, but you could go up to 90 hertz as well as 120 hertz, which is really really cool. So I think that's a really awesome thing. Nowadays we have that 120 hertz on that OLED, like we do have on that. Galaxy S20, even on our OnePlus 7T Pros and 8 Pros and stuff like that, but this was, I think, one of the first phones to bring it, which is extremely cool. So the display is IPS and it looks pretty good, but you also have that 120 hertz refresh rate, which is really awesome. Now on the above and the bottom of the display, you have, you know, a chin and the top, which, you know, is quite a bit of bezel, I'm not going to lie, but pretty much this was a gaming phone at the time and when you're playing games you want to you know put your fingers somewhere so it's really not that big of a deal i think a lot of people kind of got used to it especially if they're using a phone like this now there were some speakers i think the top is a speaker one i'm not too sure about the bottom one but you do kind of have like a surround sound kind of speaker thing going on which is really cool you have that front camera up top and that really pretty much covers it up from the front on the bottom you have that usb type c port which is really cool on the sides you had this kind of like button layout which was really weird you had that power button on the on the right side and the volume buttons on the left side and you know it's really hit or miss whether you like it or not you might like it i don't really mind it too much i just wish the power button wasn't like recessed in the design now the sides of the phone are pretty much like the flat size on like the iphone 5s and 5s's and stuff now whether you like it or not that's up to you me personally i kind of you know didn't like it at first but after holding it for a little bit longer i think i do like it you know it's really not that big of a deal and i think it's actually kind of cool and adds a little bit more character to this specific phone now you do have a sim card slot and an sd card slot on this phone too which is really cool so you can expand that storage if you want to and on the back you can it sounds like I'm being sponsored to say this, but there's a lot of criticism I have for this phone too. And on the back, you have a glass back, which is really cool, and a dual camera setup, which I'll get into in a second. And overall, I mean, if you need a you know phone that looks like this or something like that, then I guess this one's yours. But you know, would this be a design that I would use every day? Probably not. I mean, it's a pretty massive phone. The width of this phone is pretty large. You know, it's not like a regular 5.78 inch display. I mean, to give you some context, the 11 Pro's display is. 5.8 inches and even though they're measured a little bit different that phone I can easily you know use in one hand and use it this one is just too wide for me to use on an everyday basis so in terms of that in terms of the outside that really pretty much covers it you know it has IP67 dust and water resistance which is really cool so it really just depends whether you like this design or not do you like it then obviously use it if you don't like it then obviously don't use it so that pretty much covers it up on the outside now hitting on the software this thing has started with android 8.1 oreo we were able to upgrade it to android 9.0 but since then there has been no more updates on this thing which is honestly you know whatever i don't think a lot of people are going to be using this thing anyway but the fact of the matter is is that the, this thing has that android 9.0 which is already kind of outdated in a lot of ways and 
that's honestly kind of sad too. Now you might be able to like custom ROM this device or something, but honestly, I don't really mind about the software updates since like Android 8, but it would have been really cool if they were able to push updates on this thing. Apparently it took like a year for this thing to even get Android Pie. So, I mean, Android 10 has been out for, you know, it's going to be about a year now soon. So maybe it'll get Android 10 at some point, but I probably doubt it. I don't know if Razer has said anything about these software updates on this device. So I guess at this point it's whatever, but in terms of software, it's pretty much stock. So that's really nice. There's not like a bunch of skins going on this thing or whatever so it's pretty basic you know there's not a lot of craziness going on so for the most part it's stock and i guess that's a really huge plus for this device as well now moving on to the performance side of things and this is where this phone is probably one of its you know biggest highlights it has that qualcomm snapdragon 845 chipset octa core cpu and adreno 630 gpu and only one model of this thing the 64 gig model with 8 gigs of ram and i definitely do think at the end of the day this is a really good performing phone even now in 2020 which you know isn't saying a lot this phone not even that old but it's a really good performing phone really everything i threw at it was perfectly fine that 120 hertz refresh rate is something that's so i don't know why it just makes the phone feel so much faster even though it's really not it just makes everything smooth it makes me literally want to use this phone like for everything <laughs> And I can't wait until iPhones get it, but I definitely do think if you're using this phone in terms of like a performance standpoint, you're going to be getting great performance out of it. And this thing at its, you know, core was a gaming phone. You know, that's one of its biggest, you know, selling points was, you know, to play games with and all that stuff. Razer makes gaming laptops and the gaming performance on this thing is still really good, I guess. You know, I played pretty basic games, but then I played Real Racing 3 and that handled this phone perfectly fine and vice versa. This phone handled that perfectly fine. I didn't have any issues and, you know, really no stuttery frames or anything like that. I probably should have put Fortnite on it because I have a lot of experience with that now because I've been playing so much. But at the end of the day, this phone performance is still extremely good. And, you know, I wouldn't say it's the best performing phone even probably in 2018. Actually, it's probably one of the better performing phones of 2018, to be honest, now that I think about it. But nowadays, I mean, there's phones that are performing way better, but this is an extremely good performing phone at the end of the day. So in terms of the performance and everything, that's what this phone was selling for and it still holds up quite well in 2020 so in terms of performance that pretty much covers it now like i stated before this thing has a dual camera setup on the back two 12 megapixel sensors and honestly i don't know i at first when i opened up the camera it had like some really weird glitchiness of the frame rate and i don't know what was going on there you have ois on that main lens which is cool but you also had that other you know 12 megapixel lens which i think is a telephoto lens they don't really specify here but the weird thing is is that i don't know what the quality really isn't that great and that's probably one of my biggest gripes with this camera you can do 4k at 60 which is really cool but i, I don't know maybe i was expecting more the camera ui is also seems really outdated it just seems kind of like what like android like 5.0 like that specific camera like what looked like I feel like they could have done better on that and it's weird because they could have just kept it stock like they kept so many other components on this phone stock except that so that was really weird but it is what it is i think the camera on this thing probably is not its biggest asset like yeah it takes photos you have that 4k 60 which is cool like i stated but everything else i mean i'll probably not recommend using this camera on an everyday basis but if it's your only camera for your if it's your phone or for a main thing like i guess it's good at the end of the day but you have an 8 megapixel front facing camera that you could do 1080p at 60 with which is really cool but other than that like i stated i mean it probably would not be my first camera to recommend to people so that pretty much covers it up there now ending it off with the battery life this thing has a 4000 mAh hour battery on it which actually really isn't that bad i don't think this phone has wireless charging though which is really weird but the battery life you know is actually not that bad on this device now i will specify preface that by saying you know if you actually buy this phone and you're using the 120 hertz refresh rate on it every day then the battery life is probably not going to be that great but if you keep it at that 60 hertz or even keep it mid-tier at that 90 hertz i think you're going to find it you know pretty good for the most part especially if you keep it at that 60 hertz you know because it is that 1440p display it's a pretty you know big display for the most part it does kind of suck up a little battery life and the main thing and the main reason why a lot of people i think complain about the battery life is because they use this phone as the gaming phone as they should but me personally i'm not like a gamer or anything like that so i'm not i don't play these heavy intensive games and apps that suck up a lot of battery life so I think that probably will cover up the battery life department. You know, I think it's good. It's basically what you make of it, but that pretty much covers it up there. 
Now to end off, I mean, should you still pick up the Razer Phone 2 in 2020? I would probably say like if you need like a phone that needs that has that 120 hertz refresh rate and you don't want to spend that much money on it, whatever, like you could probably buy this phone and be okay with it. But I would probably recommend picking up a Galaxy S20 to be honest. The amount that you can buy this thing on Amazon, which is around like $670, you can just pick up a Samsung Galaxy S20 for like a hundred something dollars more and still have the 120 hertz refresh rate, but gain so many more features, get a better build quality, better screen, better really everything if you just go switch over to S20. So I would probably recommend you doing that but again it, it is what it is you know i'll link a razor phone too and s20 in the description below if you want to get them from there but that's really pretty much it if you guys have any other questions or anything leave it down in the comment section as well hit the like button that means so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so it means so much if you guys get that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my second channel all those links are linked down below i'd really appreciate it if you guys to check it out more importantly everything also of every single one of you guys Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.